Hello. We're glad you've joined us for this live webinar, Flexible Manufacturing Strategies for Cell and Gene Therapy Products. I am Judy O'Rourke of LabRoots, and I'll be moderating this session. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots, the leading scientific social networking website and provider of virtual events and webinars advancing scientific collaboration and learning. It's brought to you by Terumo BCT. Terumo BCT, a global leader in blood component, therapeutic apheresis, and cellular technologies, believes in the potential of blood and cells to do even more for patients than they do today. Terumo BCT's cell therapy technologies business enables researchers, developers, and manufacturers to create next generation cell and gene therapies. To learn more, visit www.terumobct.com slash machine efficiency. Let's get started. You can pose questions to the speaker during the presentation while they're fresh in your mind. To do so, simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your screen labeled Ask a Question and click on the Send button. Questions will be answered after the presentation. To enlarge the slide window, click on the arrows at the top right-hand corner of the presentation window. If you experience technical problems seeing or hearing the presentation, just click on the support tab found at the top right of the presentation window or report your problem by typing it into the answer a question box located on the far left of your screen. This is an educational webinar and thus offers free continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credits tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process of obtaining your credits. I now present a speaker, Wen Yan Leong from Terumo BCT. Wen Yan Leong, PhD, is the regional expert for the cell therapy technologies portfolio of Terumo BCT. Responsible for managing knowledge transfer and implementation of efficient and safe manufacturing solutions in the biotechnology and cell therapy field, Dr. Leong works closely with various industry representatives, researchers, and clinicians throughout Asia Pacific. She's very passionate about the advances in cell and gene-based therapy and seeks active dialogue with stakeholders in the field on bringing innovations to the patient. Prior to joining the cell processing team of Terumo BCT, she spent four productive years in academic research on cell-based regenerative medicine platforms, working on a variety of cell types and biomaterials. Her contribution of 10 research articles and three patents to this specialty resulted in a PhD in bioengineering conferment from Nan Nuang Technological University, Singapore. Wen Yan will now begin her presentation. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Today, I will be speaking about flexible manufacturing strategies for cell and gene therapy products. I want to start by highlighting the concept of automation, and then I will move on to showcasing the flexibility of quantum cell extension system through five different applications and its case study. Let's begin. Throughout the industry, there is a consensus that automation for advanced therapy product manufacturing is critical for business success. The debate now is, when should we incorporate automation? We have to recognize the distinct shifts in priorities along the development cycle of the therapeutic product. Scientists are focused on figuring out the process, innovation, product profile, and proving that the therapy works. On the other end of the spectrum, a manufacturing mindset is directed at meeting quality requirements, having a scalable and reproducible manufacturing process while managing the cost of goods in order to be accessible as a treatment option. When is the right time to automate? The common excuses to delay automation are the cost of investing amidst grappling with the uncertainty and complex nature of process development. Unfortunately, when you are finally ready to change the manufacturing strategy to be commercially viable, it is either too late or much more difficult to change. As the process and reagents will define the product and will be detailed in your IND submission, the reality is 
the process and cost of goods are locked in here. Any change thereafter will require some form of comparability study, including repeating very costly clinical trials. And in this very competitive industry, an increased time to market can have devastating consequences. Drawing from experience and case studies, we strongly believe that one has to begin with the end in mind, gain clarity on what is important at commercial production, and work backwards to implement strategies that will enable your business viability. To manage costs, these are some major areas for your consideration. Firstly, select reagents that can meet manufacturing quality and regulatory requirements as well as supply needs, and optimize your process to reduce the volume of reagents consumed. Second, optimize your processing steps, which come from the deep understanding of your cell. Take away any steps and tests that are not necessary. Third, find ways to reduce the need for high-end facility space, which add on a fixed significant cost independent of your productivity. You can do this by utilizing small footprint devices and choosing closed systems that can be used in lower grade clean room facilities. Four, automation of the most labor intensive tasks can help to reduce the number of staff and the level of skill required. This also helps to reduce operator related errors and variability. Number five, reduce the time and labor required for long SOP and extensive manual documentation by adopting automation and its electronic records. And lastly, reduce to a minimum need for process change and therefore the need for revalidation. Moving from one bioreactor to a larger one is considered a process change compared to scaling out. The quantum cell expansion system is designed for manufacturing without compromising flexibility. It is a GMP in a box replacing the incubator, biosafety cabinet, and clean rooms typically required for flask-based culture. Users all around the world have used this benchtop device for various cell culture applications in academic and commercial settings. Briefly, the features are listed below. By being a closed system with single-use disposables, it reduces the risk of contamination and therefore reduces the need for higher grade clean room facilities. Automation greatly simplifies the most error-prone and labor-intensive steps of the cell culture process. The electronic documentation feature also enables traceability. Increase reproducibility by removing operator to operator variation and therefore batch variability. And lastly, the quantum allows a fully scalable and flexible manufacturing approach. Increased demand can be immediately met with additional quantum systems without lengthy process development and revalidation associated with scale up systems. The Quantum is a benchtop perfusion-based bioreactor system that can culture both adherence and suspension cells. You can think of the bioreactor as a Pringle scan containing 11,500 semi-permeable hollow fibers that give it 2.1 square meters of surface area. This is equivalent to 120 T175 flasks. The semi-permeable membrane of the hollow fibers equips the bioreactor with two separate environments. Intracapillary, IC, and red, which is within the hollow fibers, and EC, extracapillary, which is the space outside the hollow fibers. This is denoted in blue.
The hollow fiber membrane has an approximate molecular weight cutoff at 17 kilodalton. The IC and EC environments are hence separated and allows us to have two different fluid sources in the bioreactor. We can keep cells and large molecules such as serum proteins and cytokines in one environment while small molecules such as glucose and lactate can freely move between the two environments. This design helps to greatly reduce cytokine usage and therefore cost by limiting the cytokines in the IC loop with the cells and exchanging glucose and metabolic waste using basal needle on the EC side. We will speak later about this advantage. But you can see the graph on the lower right-hand corner confirming in our lab very little interleukin-2 passed through from the IC site depicted in red to the EC site in blue throughout a 10-day T-cell culture process. In process sampling to monitor the cell growth is easily managed through a sampling port. As we move to manufacturing large batches, we should not depend on qualitative operator dependent judgment of confluence as a gauge of cell growth or harvesting, which leads to process variability. Daily samples of lactate can provide a quantitative measure of how well the cells are growing and can help the operator decide whether to increase the feed rate to maintain the nutrient and waste balance and to predict the stage of the cell proliferation cycle and determine if it is time to harvest. And finally, to predict the expected cell numbers in the quantum. The graph below shows correlation between the lactate generation rate with the actual number of T cells harvested from the bioreactor. Here, I will be presenting five case studies published by quantum users in peer reviewed journals. As you can see, the quantum is very flexible and suitable for various applications from cell expansion to viral vector production. For the first application, let's discuss adherence expansion in the form of mesenchymal stem cells. Dr. Patrick Henley from Baylor College of Medicine published a paper on MSC expansion directly from whole bone marrow in two consecutive passages. To briefly explain the format of the slide from here onwards, you will see a green timeline bar and the main touch points in it, denoted as dots. The details of the main steps are in the gray boxes below. Now you will see in this, you will see in this quantum run, there are four main steps for a primary culture of MSC. The first step will have the bioreactor prepared and coated with an adherence promoter, such as fibronectin. The next day, 25 ml of bone marrow aspirate was loaded into the quantum, and cells were allowed to attach on the hollow fibers for 48 hours. Then, the quantum will perform an automatic washout of non-adhered cells, and continue feeding the adhered cells for another 11 days. Dr. Henley had the flexibility to use DNEM with 5% human platelet lysate and culture the cells under hypoxic condition. Daily glucose and lactate sample allowed him to adjust the feed rate to match the cell growth. And finally, determined that the cells were ready for harvest at day 14. At this last step, 180 ml of triple select was hooked up onto the system. The quantum automates the harvest protocol 
and 50 million NSCs were harvested in 13 minutes. So package one NSCs were then subcultured to obtain clinically relevant numbers. A new disposable was fitted onto the quantum system and coated with fibronectin for four hours before 20 million cells were loaded. After a 24-hour attachment phase, the biorector was perfusion fed for the next five to six days. The cell expansion was monitored by the daily glucose and lactate samples as well. At the end of the week, 660 million cells were harvested in a small 400 ml volume on average. Dr. Henley found a significant impact from switching from manual flask to the quantum system. Firstly, the protocol was highly simplified into four automated main steps for each passage. Direct loading of bone marrow without cycle separation was also possible with the quantum system. Secondly, time and labor savings were achieved through automation. You can look at the graph, um, the table on the right-hand side. The quantum took 21 days and two passages to produce 200 million cells compared to 30 days and four passages in the manual flask culture. Further, harvest being most time sensitive required five cells and six hours in the manual process, which was highly automated and quick in the quantum otherwise. Third, the amount of disposables and reagents were also greatly reduced, not only enabling cost savings, but also simplifying supply chain and logistics. And finally, the small harvest volume of quantum allowed easy downstream processing, and therefore, two staff members were able to complete the harvest and downstream processing within 45 minutes, as compared to 30 man hours in the manual process. Next, I would like to showcase our in-house laboratory protocol on expanding T cells. In this 2018 paper, we reported a simple 10-day protocol to expand 100 million peripheral blood mononuclear cells, PBMCs, to yield 26 to 30 billion T cells. Briefly, we have collected ourselves on the spectra of here. And then we have isolated these cells using the Terimobicities Elutra or FICO. This allowed freezing of the cells without post store viability issues. So 100 million PBMCs on average were thought and mixed with CD3, CD28 dynabits in a one to one ratio for activation, and then loaded onto the quantum system. Two different media compositions were used. Cells were fed on the IC site with Texmex, supplemented with IL2 cytokine. While metabolic exchange was performed primarily through the EC site using basal media. In the last step at day 10, 28 billion cells were harvested on average within four minutes into a one liter harvest bed. Our scientists have developed a very simple protocol to expand T cells in the quantum system. Firstly, no preculture was required to make a minimum seeding number, and thought cells were directly loaded and expanded in the quantum. In the top right table, you can see the quantum produced a highly pure CD3 positive T cell population with very low PD1 exhaustion marker expression. Second, in a small benchtop device with 190 ml of holofiber volume, we were able to pack 30 billion cells 
because of the excellent gas exchange our design can provide. We were also able to harvest these 30 billion cells quickly and in a small volume of 700 ml on average. So one operator was able to handle the downstream processing. And finally, the dual loop ICEC design provided significant savings in cytokine use by using basal media on the ET site to exchange glucose and lactate and keeping the cytokines with the cells on the IC site we were able to reduce the use of IL-2 by 80% and serum by 90%. Our third case study is from City of Hope. This recent publication reported the expansion and adenoviral transduction of neural stem cells, NSCs, in five quantum systems which were then pulled for a clinical cell bank for clinical trials. Here, they freshly prepared and coated the bioreactor overnight in the first step, and then loaded 52 million NSC. The cells were then expanded to confluence for eight days, and adenoviral vector was added at day nine. The incubation and feeding can be performed automatically. On the final day, an average of 1.6 billion NSCs were harvested from each quantum, pooled, and cryopreserved. I would also like to mention at this point that they have since completed a phase one trial using allogenic neural stem cells pooled from seven quantum systems. Because of the limited space in their existing facility, City of Hope would have had to perform multiple batches to achieve the target of 8 billion cells. With the quantum, they could do more with the current resources and produce 8 billion cells in one single batch, therefore reducing the time in GMP production suite by 60% and eliminating costs from multiple lot release testing. You can see this in the table. They also found a 10 times lower seeding density was possible on the quantum, therefore reducing the amount of preparation for the starting product. Thirdly, the small footprint of the quantum system meant they could fit several units in their current facility, increasing their manufacturing output towards clinical production scale. And finally, whether it was one, five, or seven quantums, City of Hope demonstrated the scalability and reproducibility of the device in producing cells that meet release testing criteria. We have now come to our final application, cell cytosome production. Because of the dual loop design of our bioreactor, we are able to program the device to a production scheme of your choice, batch-wise or continuously. On the left, we can collect in batches by closing the IC loop to concentrate the secreted product in the IC loop while exchanging nutrients and removing waste through the EC loop. After a set time interval, we can flush the IC loop quickly to push out the secretome and obtain a small volume but highly concentrated product in a bag. If you so desire, we can also adopt continuous production on the right, where we can continuously feed the IC loop and push out the product through the IC outlet. This results in high volume and low concentration products. In the next two slides, I will share with you how two of our customers have utilized each of these schemes successfully. Dr. Rahul Kaluri's group in MD Anderson 
reported the successful exosome production with the quantum using batch collection scheme every two days for a period of 12 days. In that protocol, the quantum was used to expand NSC mesenchymal stem cells for nine days with serum supplemented media until confluence was reached. The media was automatically replaced with serum-free media for exosome production. Cells were fed via the EC site while the IC site was kept very quiet and closed to allow the build-up of exosome. At the end of 48 hours, 250 ml of product was pushed out of the IC loop into a bag. This was repeated another five times in the next 10 days. In another instance, Dr. Gerhard Bauer from UC Davis used a continuous collection scheme to produce lentiviral vectors from HEC 293 T cells. After an overnight fibronectin coating process, HEC 293 T cells were loaded onto the quantum and allowed to expand before transfection. As we know, transfection is very time sensitive and labor intensive. Here, the quantum automates the transfection step of incubating and washing out the toxic mix without operator intervention. Post transfection, the media was switched to serum free media automatically, and viral vectors were collected continuously in the waste bag over the next 40 hours. And finally, the hex 293 T cells were automatically harvested. For QC. Taken together, the quantum demonstrates high flexibility to suit our customers' goals and simplifying previously laborious manual tasks into a few highly automated steps. Unlike other biorectors, the quantum can be configured to yield a small volume concentrated product that can be easily handled at downstream processing. Finally, our customers and their regulatory authorities appreciate the close nature of the quantum in producing viral vectors. Previously, I mentioned that most of the process is locked at IND submission for clinical trials, and Cell therapy developers should begin their process development with manufacturing concepts in mind. While cost, financial, and process uncertainty can seem to be common barriers to automation, it does not have to be so. With the right solution, you can automate early without compromising flexibility. The various case studies presented today have collectively demonstrated quantum flexibility in culturing various cell types and applications, as well as throughout our customers' process development cycle. Our users have also been able to transition into clinical use with the quantum. Indeed, there has been more than 11 IND submissions worldwide incorporating quantum in their process and several clinical trials in process or completed at this point. Finally, the examples illustrate how automation can bring immediate returns, including production efficiency, reduction of specialized labor, reagent savings, and real estate savings in both academic and commercial settings. With this, I thank you for your attention and will be happy to take any questions. Thank you.
Thank you, Wen Yan, for your presentation. A quick reminder for our audience on how to submit questions. Simply type them into the drop-down box located on the far left of your presentation window, labeled Ask a Question, and click on the Send button. Wen Yan will answer as many questions as time permits. The first question is, what are the clean room requirements for quantum? Thank you, Judy. So the functionally closed nature of the quantum system provides the flexibility for the environment in which the quantum system can be run. So the case study that we have published a couple years ago demonstrated the ability to produce cells meeting all safety requirements, for example, sterility, endotoxins, and mycoplasma, while operating in a non-classified space but ultimately, clean room requirements for all clinical production are at a purview of local regulatory authorities. Thank you. The next one is, is the quantum system GMP compliant? The quantum system aids in GMP compliance um, by being a functionally closed and automated system. In addition, the software within the quantum system is compatible with CFR 21 Part 11 requirements. So we have run reports um, that are locked automatically, user authentication, and automatic recording of temperature and pressure throughout the run. Thank you. Your next one is, how do you get the cells out of the quantum system? So cells are removed um, in a manner that is consistent with a flask-based process. The quantum system automates a system wash to remove this, the media and uh, replace it with a wash solution. And then it adds the cell release reagent of your choice, incubates it for a couple minutes according to your protocol, and then um, the cell suspension is then collected into a pre-connected harvest bag in four minutes or less. So under the normal circumstances, our users have been able to use the same release agent that they are currently using in their flask-based process. Thank you. The next one is, is there shear stress on the cells in the quantum? So, um, we have a paper on that um, that was published about five years ago. It's called Genetic Stability of the MSCs that are cultured on the quantum system in, cell, uh, in cytotherapy journal. So, although some quantum tasks, for example, like the WASH, are using very high flow rates, they are not representative of the flow rates inside the bioreactors fibers um, because we have 11,000 fibers in the quantum bioreactor. The fluid flow is broken up um, into these fibers and in our study it reported negligible shear even during the harshest flow conditions when compared to manual pipetting. Um, in addition, many of our customers um, throughout um, the world have evaluated the quantum system and analyzed the cell quality. They have found them to be of similar acceptable quality um, as compared to their current processes. So, for example, in City of Hope, which we just um, mentioned previously, they had a batch of cells that were pulled from seven quantum systems and they all met release, criteria, uh, release testing criteria and were comparable to flask. These cells were then used in a phase one trial. Thank you. The next one is, have you compared the quantum and GE's wave cell expansion system for immune cell expansion? Um, some of our customers are currently doing that. Um, whether we are doing that in our laboratory, I cannot disclose. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the next one is, any reference to use this quantum system in cell therapy commercial production? For commercial production, 
I wouldn't uh, be able to comment. I'm not very sure about that, but I can say that there has been 11, more than 11 IND submissions that uh, utilize the quantum as part of the processes, which have been approved um, throughout um, the US and uh, EMEA in Europe. There has been at least three different clinical trials that are currently ongoing or completed with cells that were produced on the quantum. Thank you. Next one is, what is the maximum volume that um, quantum can produce per machine? So um, I'm trying to understand the question. Um, in terms of maximum volume, um, if we're talking about cell numbers, um, it really depends on the cells that we're uh, that is of question. So I can't really answer this, uh, but perhaps I can give you a ballpark in terms of cell numbers for MSCs. We have customers who have um, cultured up to 1 billion cells, uh, 1 billion MSCs. And for neural stem cells, as City of Hope has published, they have um, consistently uh, harvested about 1.6 billion neural stem cells per quantum. And for the suspension cells, um, in our lab, we have gone on to optimize the cell protocol for culturing T cells, and we have been getting upwards of 40 billion cells per run. Thank you. So we'll, we'll wait just a few moments for um, any other questions that um, might be coming in. It seems people are sending in their questions, they're thinking about what they want to ask you, and they're taking their time to ask you some questions. So we'll wait just a moment. We welcome more questions, of course. And you know what, I can, um, we can move along, and then if people do have questions that come in as we're talking here at the end, we can just ask them, we can just jump back and ask those questions. So I would like to once again thank Wen Yan for her presentation. Do you have any final comments? Um, thank you, Judy. Um, at this point, I would like to thank all our um, participants, and if you have any more questions, please reach out to us. Thank you. Great, thanks. I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. Uh, any questions we did not get to today will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information you provided at the time of registration. We would like to thank our sponsor, Terumo BCT, for underwriting today's educational webcast. This webcast can be viewed on demand through July 15, 2019. Labroots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.